I'm giving somebody the blues today. What I really love about the FGC is that there is so many different commentators and you can hear so many different perspectives, opinions, voices. When they use just the same people over and over and over, it kind of takes away of what make the FGC fighting game community a community. I'm all for new people being a part of the you know commentary and discussions and whatever, but not everyone is. BIC, they say, ta-da, catch me on the mic for some Tekken 7 action at CEO 2023 this weekend. Anakin says, nice to see a fresh face on the mic and generally positive reception from the Tekken community. Congrats. Side note, we should be more supportive of one another instead of acting bitter about why we weren't chosen or whatever. And then, of course, we talked about Michael Murray basically agreeing that we should be nice to everyone. Now, who's this person? Who's this person who's bitter, you know, to quote Anakin? I found a tweet here. It's deleted now, of course. That's what happens. You know, you do something wrong, you delete it, you backtrack. And this is from uh, Rip, watching CEO this weekend on mute. They're upset because they can't commentate and someone else is. I'm pretty sure they're just pushing for new faces on the mic. I was available for CEO, but not chosen either. Maybe you should try knowing less about the game. Seems like a good way to be selected lately. This is just such entitlement. Rizzy, I don't know who this person is, but they are, uh, say, I'm going to speak on behalf of I am BIC. This type of behavior coming from a vet that she looks up to is uncalled for and extremely disappointing. Regardless, she's gonna rock the mic and give it her all. Maybe Tekken needs some new commentary faces because some of the old ones are so insecure that they gatekeep, haze, and do playground politics with anybody who tried to get a fair crack. Honestly disgusted with what I saw on my timeline just now, you can be better than that. Another tweet says, is there any reason why Rip gets to do shit like this? and no Tekken vets have anything to say. A tweet from Rip kind of trying to clear everything up says, I knew it was dumb and I deleted it within two minutes. To be clear, I was trying to support Bloodhawk, who was known for game knowledge greater than mine as well. I realized it was gonna be misconstrued as hate towards I am BIC, so I deleted it. I DM'd her and apologized as well. A response to this says, misconstrued as hate. Nah, dog. Supporting Bloodhawk being butthurt does not equal sneak dissing. Now, let's get to um, the resolution because, you know, Rip apologized and all that stuff. So it says, uh, hello, everyone. I've been seeing a lot of posts about what's going on. It's okay to feel frustrated. We've all had our moments. Rip reached out and apologized to me via DMs. Please know that I have no ill feelings toward him. He cleared the air and explained the situation to me. That's very commendable and it means so much to me that he was willing to take the time out to issue an apology. I just want to have fun this weekend and do the best on commentary. Now, a great resolution. But this also reminded me of a past run-in that I had with Rip. I never talked about this like in an actual video. This incident happened like months ago and I think we we're waiting for the new 5.0 update or whatever and I was doing as I did you know back then I had about 3,000 subscribers and I was just covering the news I remember Rip put out a tweet it says I know everyone else wants expects patch notes ASAP but I think having just one day of wild discovery would be fun AF and basically when I saw this tweet I mistook it as some sort of official statement because we know sometimes the commentators, they do act as spokesmen for Tekken. Sometimes Markman would give a official statement. So in this instant, I just kind of got mixed up with the two. You can see with Tekken A how intertwined the commentators and also content creators are. The lines is blurred a lot of the times and it's something that I had to learn to be able to decipher. But I misunderstood the tweet and he clipped my video and he basically scorched me scorched me now i will admit the video was bad but we just got an update from ific that's basically rip and his tournament organization i learned a lot from that video that video not only got me scorched by the whole entire community but it was a very good learning lesson i need to make sure what i'm saying is actually what's happening. Some of the hardest lessons you learn is like through defeat basically. And Rip taught me a valuable lesson. This was the crazy part, right? I was just reporting on the tweet and so many people was like, stop trying to clout chase off a of Rip, you know, stop harassing Rip. And it was just crazy to see like this huge fluctuation of people coming to my channel and just harassing me. But one thing that I also did too was um, his tweet, right? He made a tweet that was about my video. 
but I turned his tweet about my video into a short and I uploaded that. And when I did that, a lot of people was like, man, this guy is really desperate for YouTube money. It was like more fuel to the fire. But this is this is the thing, right? I didn't upload that clip because like I was like trying to clout chase or whatever. I really uploaded that clip like as a reminder, how I said like I learned a valuable lesson from that. One, to always do better and never give up. Because when this whole situation was happening, I did feel like giving up. But then the second thing this video was a reminder of to never treat someone that way. Like I said, I did talk about this. I really did my best not to say anything, but to see him make the same mistake again all these months later, it kind of shows that he hasn't really learned from it. So I hope this time, you know, just seeing how the community reacted to his negativity, negativity, I hope this can be a learning experience and he grows.